Today we got the Raspberry Pi 500. Uh, Raspberry Pi sent me one of these for test and review and I've already torn it down once because I wanted to make sure that I could do it without completely blowing the thing up. But this is what you get. It's literally a computer and a keyboard. And uh, here's ports. I'll just go through it really quick. We got USB-A three ports here. There's USB 2 and then two USB 3 ports that are both on their own buses. So that's 5 gigabits and 5 gigabits. Micro SD card slot and it comes pre-installed with a 32 gig Raspberry Pi OS card. USB-C power input that can also be used as um, you know OTG mode so you can plug it into another computer. Dual HDMI outputs. Those are micro HDMI which is annoying but they do have 4K at 60 so that's nice. There's a GPIO header here which has this uh, little rubber gasket on it to cover it up. There it is. You get all the Raspberry Pi GPIO. And then there's one gigabit Ethernet. The last thing here is it looks like a Kensington slot for a lock so you could lock this. Um, although it's a plastic body so just wrenching that probably would break it right off. Uh, but yeah, yeah that is the uh, Pi 500. Let's look at the back. Looks very similar to a Pi 400. Um, yeah, 500. That's a big difference there. But it has the same ventilation holes. It doesn't have any ventilation holes across the top or anything. So really, it's it's kind of just diffusing the heat out through the whole body. And uh, in my thermal images, I saw that a lot of heat comes out through this little back area here. Uh, but there's no obvious access. And if I push on these little bumpers, there's no little screw holes. So to get this open. I need to uh, go to my trusty spudger set. So I have uh, this little iFixit set that I bought a few years back for some some projects. Uh, last time I opened up one of these, it was a Pi 400. And let me go grab one, I'll just show you. So here's my Pi 400, which is highly similar. Although, I don't know, it feels different. I think the weight's very similar. I could weigh the two and, and see. Uh, but you can see that the, the port layout's a little bit different on there. Uh, it still has the same ports, but these USB ports are shared on one 5 gigabit bus. So you get twice the bandwidth on there. And of course, the Pi 500 is going to be a lot faster. Uh, but in general, that's very, very similar. They just kind of changed the port layout. Uh, the lock slot is in the same place, which is nice if you have like a schoolroom that's using these. You don't have to change the desk layout for it. Uh, but the Pi 400 also has just, well actually, that looks like a difference. They change this a little bit. They give two more rubber bumpers to kind of hold it on your desk a little better. The Pi 400 just had plastic here. I don't even remember that. And the label on it is a bit different. It looks like the Pi logo actually has a little bit different design there. It's it's uh, a little thicker on the, on the indentation. But yeah, so there is there are some differences there. They didn't just use the exact same mold. I can see... That's interesting. They don't have, oh, they do have pin 40 and pin 1 here, just like on there. And they label power, HDMI. They don't have any label on USB or Ethernet. That is that is what it is. Uh, once you get it plugged in, you're never going to care about that anyway. Uh, but to get this one open, I actually used a screwdriver. This is not the one that I opened. The one that I opened is at home. And uh, it's a little bit beat up, so sorry about that, kids. That's That's the ones who's using it. I guess as a point of comparison, let's set them next to each other. And uh, this uh, this key has this weird little like triangle and circle, and I don't know what that exactly means. I guess that's numlock, but could be something else now. Uh, some of the keys are different. The the actual keyboard is very slightly different. This one feels a little bit more like a laptop membrane-y thing. This one feels just like the cheap Raspberry Pi keyboard. This feel is a little better, but it's not it's not approaching even like Apple a few years ago quality. Uh, but they did change one thing that I really like. Uh, instead of having to use like the function key to press power, you just press power. Uh, there's just a power button. And when you shut it down, it shows a red light for power. On here, it just turns off, and so you don't even know if you have power to it. But this is about the Pi 500. So let's get it open with our spudgers. And this is not meant to be user serviceable. I, I told you I opened it before. You can see there's a little evidence of that over here and over here. I found if I can pry up this corner clip, that's a good start. And we got the corner. So now it's just a matter of popping all of these out. And I guess I'll try on the side first here. 
Oh, sorry about the lighting here. The light only reaches down here, apparently, not uh, not up here where my fingers are. Uh, but let's start working on this seam. I can just do the rest by hand, I think. My fingers are a little bit dry, so yeah, I might end up with a cut here doing this. But they do pop out. It's not it's not meant to be user serviceable, but it's not unserviceable. It's just kind of annoying. And you probably want to do this more delicately than I am. Ooh, that one. <laughs> We're bending the plastic. Oops. Let's try not to do that. Ooh, sorry about that. I just bumped the camera too. YouTubers make this stuff look so much easier. I should probably just use a tool for these. There. And this one's being pesky. There we go. Okay. So we have the keyboard out. And uh, you can see this is a different keyboard, the back of it, than on the Pi 400. And apparently I did not plug the keyboard in very well. <laughs> that just popped right out. Uh, I probably also torqued the socket a little too much. But that is just a little... There's There's actually not that much purchase on it so it's not I mean this isn't a plug that you're supposed to plug and unplug uh, but that's how that comes out a little easily so yeah if you're taking these apart be a little more delicate than I am uh, but yeah and then there's a light pipe uh, for these three LEDs that goes down to the, the little motherboard which is peeking out back here and you might have already noticed one of the interesting new features of this stay up there uh, there is a slot here, but it's not really, and I'll get to that in just a second, but this thing is dominated by the heatsink, just like the Pi 400. Uh, these screws are, again, not really made to be user serviceable. If you use just a small, I think this is a number zero screw driver, it, it, it has a little play and it doesn't, it'll strip these screw heads. So you might want to use a bigger Phillips head. Uh, this might even be too small. Yeah, that's, that's still... I'll just use a regular old number two, I think this is. Does that work? It actually does fit. Yeah. So so if you don't use the right size, you could easily strip these little screws. Uh, so be careful if you're going to work on this thing. But I'll take these four off. And just like the Pi 400, there is a little, uh, there's this little foil sticky thing that kind of unites the Ethernet port to this heat sink, I guess, for for static discharge, something like that. Maybe that was required to get this thing to pass emissions tests for FCC. Uh, but let's get these screws out. And uh, so you'll notice when I do this, that off, uh, I have a blue little thermal pad here. Uh, I had to put that on because one they ship, again with the theme of this not being really that user serviceable, uh, the one that they ship is, I don't know where it went. The one that they shipped and was stuck on here is a bit thin. Uh, it's made to go at the factory. It sticks on and it's working. But then when you pop this off, uh, it's it's not one that kind of spreads back out. This, this is a, a slightly cheaper thermal pad that does the trick. Uh, but the one that they ship is just so thin that uh, after you pop it off, you're going to want to replace that. So if you're fixing one of these, or if you're uh, doing some hacking on it, you want to put on your own thermal pad afterwards. You can see that there's a contact patch where this, the top of the little SOC is. And that brings us to this board, which is the, uh, the entire thing. This is it. This is the Pi 400. Uh, all this other stuff is just silly casing that holds this together. So looking closely at this board, uh, you can see that in the middle, that's the heart of it, the SOC. Everything kind of goes into that. And then there's also a RAM chip. This is LPDDR4X. There's the RP1 chip that is kind of like the IO Southbridge that goes to everything else on the board. And uh, there are some traces that come over here and it's not labeled or anything, but there are some traces just like on the Pi 5, but they go to these pads. And you'll notice that there are markings for 2230, 2242, 2260, 2280. This looks like it should be an M.2 slot. It's not populated, and I don't know if we can get it populated. I'm going to hack that and try it. Up here, there's also the power management from the Pi 5. This is basically like a Pi 5, but kind of spread out. And unlike the Pi 5, though, it has an Ethernet port with external magnetics. These are the little transformers. On the Pi 5, it's built into the port, but here they have enough space that they spread that out. This looks like it might be a debug header. 
for UART, like you can you can debug the Pi through that. It's interesting that they would include that on the production unit though. Um, and then there's Wi-Fi, it's Wi-Fi 5, Bluetooth 5, I think. Uh, nothing to write home about, but it is faster than the Pi 400. Uh, there's, let's see, over here, so this is an interesting spot. You can see that there's separation on the PCB from uh, one side to the other, and that's for the power over Ethernet. You can see there's PoE right there. So it looks like it's intended to have a transformer right here, and uh, a capacitor there, and some power management chips here, and uh, some other IC, basically some different parts to give power to this board through power over Ethernet, which is interesting. You could have a lab of these running and just have an Ethernet switch powering everything with battery backup and all that. So that could be interesting to uh, try out. I, the problem is nobody knows the schematic for all this, so I probably can't hack that in, but I probably can figure out how to get, physically at least, an M.2 slot into here. Uh, oh, one other thing I didn't even notice. Look at this. There's a little... I'll bring this up closer to the camera. Maybe it can focus on it. No, not that close. I'll try this other camera. Let's see. Oh, can you see that? Yeah, right there. So that is a Raspberry Pi RP2040 chip. And it looks like, unlike in the Pi 400, they're using... An, uh, they're kind of dog-fooding their own microcontroller for the, the keyboard control. So this keyboard wherever I set it. This keyboard plugs in here and it's actually using a uh, Raspberry Pi chip for the keyboard uh, interface out to... where does it go? It looks like this might go into uh, the RP1 chip, so it might be using a USB 2 port for the keyboard. Not 100% sure on that, but uh, that that is it. And the next step for me is I'm going to try getting an M.2 slot soldered on here which I got from DigiKey. So I bought two in case I mess one up. Uh, but yeah, this is just an M.2 E key slot. And uh, here, here it is. This is the uh, thermal pad that they shipped with this. So you can see if I stick this on here, it doesn't even fully cover that. Uh, but when I stick this on here, it's, it's pretty thin. So once it gets compressed at the factory, it doesn't actually spread back out and bulk up uh, like this one will. Uh, so the... Th oh. So the thermal, thermal performance will be compromised if you pop this off and don't put your own thermal pad back on it. At least that's what I've found. Uh, and if you strip these screws, they're what gives it the pressure. So you want to make sure you don't strip these screws by using, in this case, a number two uh, Phillips head. I am not a soldering master or anything like that. But uh, we're going to try to get one of these uh, M.2 slots on here. So I bought these from DigiKey. And... I think they were about four bucks each. I bought two just in case I wreck one. Um, you know, I should have bought like five or ten just to have them on hand. But uh, yeah, I don't have all of the proper tools for doing this the right way. But I have some of the bright tools to do this okay. And uh, we'll see. We'll see if we can get this mounted up on here. Looks like it's got a couple guide pins, which makes it a little easier. Let's grab you. So we're going to put it right here. And are we in? Yeah, it looks like we're in there. And I'm going to try to tack it on. We'll tack it on and see what happens here. Okay, we're hot. Tend to tip a little bit. And Tack this on here. Oop, it shifted again. Turn it. Stay on there. It's gonna be messy, but maybe we can get it to work. Well, I'm really good at bridging these solder joints. That's uh, one takeaway here. Well, I don't have the capacitors in place, and uh, my soldering job is about the level of like a grade schooler. But we can uh, see what happens here. It will certainly be exciting, one way or the other. Let's do that. There. Perfectly safe. And... We have a red light. Okay. 
Looks like I didn't completely sacrifice this board. Let's see if it boots up though. Here it goes. Yeah. So I didn't clean up all of these traces all that much because it doesn't look like they're connected to anything except for maybe some grounds. So I'm going to plug this guy in and uh, we might just sacrifice it. Let's see if we get magic here even without everything the way that it's supposed to be. This probably will not work, but if it does, that's unbelievable. There's an LED on this. The reason I chose this one is A, it's cheap and I'm willing to sacrifice it, and B, there's an LED right there that'll show if it gets power. Looks like it's not getting power. So my guess is maybe there's something else that I'm missing. Well, I probably have to get those caps on the board. I think I might just wait until Raspberry Pi someday adds this feature to the board. But it looks like I didn't sacrifice the board, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> so coming back to this with a fresh mind a day later and not at the end of the day, <clears throat> I'm realizing that uh, I am there's an uphill battle here. I don't think I would be able to get this working without schematics and everything because flip this thing over, there's a bunch of circuits down here that I'm presuming are for 3.3 volt, 5 volt, whatever whatever voltages an NVMe drive needs. So I don't think this would be a trivial hack to uh, to add a header for M.2 to a general Pi 500. But uh, seeing that it's there, I presume that there's going to be some other use for this board. Maybe there will be like a pro version or something. I don't know. Uh, we could have an Apple situation where there's like the Pi 500, the Pi 500 Pro, the Pro Max, who knows what. It'd be really cool to have like a Pi 500 Pro Max with a built-in display and battery. Wait a second, that's just a laptop. I don't know. I don't know if that's in their plans. But anyway, yeah, I don't, there's, there's no way I'm going to be able to get this going. Uh, somebody probably could. You could reverse engineer this. Uh, but you have to figure out the power circuit here. And uh, you'd have to put a couple tiny, tiny SMD capacitors on the PCIe lanes here, which I also didn't do yesterday. Yeah, there's there's just a lot to that that uh, if you're not a skilled PCB uh, hacker, you're not going to be able to get that going. So you got the Pi 500 on top, Pi 400 below. Very similar layouts, except everything's kind of flip-flopped. Even the Wi-Fi is in the same area, but I noticed that on uh, the Pi 500, the Wi-Fi is been kind of kicked out to the side a little more. And of course there's the PoE and M.2 slot on the Pi 500. Flipping them over, there's the back sides. For anybody that really wants to see that stuff. So they did use a different microcontroller. This one has a, uh, oh man I can't read that. Can't read that just glancing at it. Uh, but it's definitely a different microcontroller than the RP2040 on the Pi 500 for the keyboard input. Yep, and uh, don't look too closely at that terrible soldering job. <laughs> at least we know it won't break anything. 